Well, thank you for coming, everyone. I see we have humans here today. Um, the reason I say that is it seems today more people spend reading like this. Right? of 25 people walking down the street in the line and they're all doing the same thing. <laughs> Nobody was interacting. Nobody was saying hi. The caption on the picture was the real zombie apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you humans for coming today. <laughs> okay, so as she said, I live in Club Paxi. Um, this is the first of my saga. And um, I have the second book hands with the editor right now. Um, I refer to this as my gypsy Celtic fairy tale. Einstein said that if you want your children to be smart, read them a fairy tale. And if you want them to be smart, read them more fairy tales. <laughs> um, I'm a visionary fiction author, and um, we are a new age of writers sharing our truth as responsible way showers to a better world through what we write. Besides telling a good story, visionary fiction and, and, and enlightens and encourages the reader to expand their awareness of greater possibilities. Visionary fiction can have many subgenres, and I chose fantasy and magical realism. So how does one go about choosing to write visionary fiction? I think it chooses you. It is something that is already inside of you. But what do you write when every word has already been written? and every, every thought has already been thought. Like J.R. R. Tolkien and J.M. Barry and C.S. Lewis, you write about experiences life has brought you. And if that fails, you channel it, which I've done in this book. And um, I've tweaked it by adding a little fantasy and a little magical realism. My heart like crazy. <laughs> so for me, right, my writing career began the day I was because I was born an empath. Empaths are highly intuitive and very creative creatures. Empaths are very sensitive to the environment and are in tune with our planet. And some empaths can see natural disasters before they even happen. The worst thing about being an empath is we feel others' emotions, including their pain and their illnesses. Um, and sometimes we can take them on as our own. There are many people walking around today that are empathic and have no clue. And those people are usually misunderstood and labeled as over-emotional, introverted, clinically depressed, and so on. So the tagline in my book says, what if who you are is punishable by death? This refers to a time not too long ago, and it's still happening today in some countries around us of uh, how people much like me were tortured, burned at the stake, drowned, hung, hung etc. So the heroine of my story, Chayon, was born much like me. But in her world, she is relentlessly pursued to be put to death for her gifts. Because I was different, I was shy, introverted. So I grew up spending a lot of time in my room, and I loved to read fairy tales, and I loved to read about horses. I'm with you, Bruce. <laughs> and I always dreamed about being the lonely woman in the woods, healing all the sick animals, especially horses and birds. Since empaths are hardly sensitive, it makes them natural healers, and so I became obsessed with finding everything out I could about natural healing, and that led me to the world of metaphysics, and I began my journey as a healer of animals. So I know how it feels to ride on the back of a horse that I helped to survive cancer, after he was given only eight months to live. I know how it feels to have a bird or a falcon wake up in your hand after it pulled a kamikaze run at my window. <laughs> and it's this feeling of bliss that follows after using my given abilities, sometimes referred to as magic. And all of these things are inspired and written about in my story. So the word magic today is sometimes misunderstood. And the magic I speak of <clears throat> has nothing whatsoever to do with magician's magic or Hollywood hocus pocus. Simply put, magic is to make change in your own or someone else's life by using mere thoughts and intention accompanied by unending belief, something which we all have the ability to do. 
So there are two things I've learned on my journey from childhood to adulthood. Most of what I was told is true is not. And most of what I was told wasn't true is. So Cheyenne learns this on her quest into the realm of forbidden magic. And she will be guided by wise and interesting way showers. But her greatest teachers will be the horse and the dragon. Both are symbolic of life, death, and resurrection. Something which Cheyenne will have to face and conquer in order to fulfill her destiny. So in essence, this, is, this book is about reconnecting to and bringing balance back to our living, breathing planet and all of her natural realms. It is about being part of something bigger and inspiring others to awaken to the truth of who they are and that wonderful journey of self-discovery. We live in a world wanting instant gratification and instant gain and are rushing ourselves to our graves. Yet most of us haven't really lived. A wise gypsy woman, a beloved character in my book, said, never rush the journey, for life is the best part. So you're all welcome to come back and look, my book, look through my book. And just want to say it's, it's in Italy right now at the Bologna uh, Italy Fair, and it's doing quite, quite well. So thank you. Thank you.